So wet lab setup is uh, really very important, especially for uh, tertiary care centers where you have a lot of trainees come in. And uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, such a wet lab in uh, Madurai Arvindai Hospital. So the requirement includes a table-mounted microscope, eye holder for holding the eyeball, instruments and consumables, a uh, very good audio-visual unit with projector systems which are very helpful, uh, live demonstration. So this is a, a small video of the wet lab which we have. And I'll go on to my talk at hand. Uh, there are certain features of glaucoma surgery, which, uh, especially implant surgery, which one must consider. Uh, the most important thing is whenever we are attempt an implant surgery, it's always a refractory glaucoma which we are trying to treat. And uh, now recently, implants have become affordable also. Like, for example, the RD implant costs about 4,500 rupees. And uh, that doesn't mean that uh, the growth will be, you know, we'll start using it left, right, and center. Uh, and conventionally, we have always uh, treated uh, glaucoma surgery as being the basis, trabeculectomy. But with uh, the RD coming into place and uh, the other implants being more frequently used, you must understand it will be the second or third surgery invariably for the patient. And one, uh, we have to have meticulous planning before we attempt uh, the surgery, especially where to place the implant and what sort of tissues available to cover it. And uh, unlike trabeculectomy, where most, m much, many of the steps are also internal, this is a purely external surgery. So the only thing that goes into the anterior chamber is the tube, and dissection has to be very uh, meticulous. And the implant which we use are uh, large implants, especially the RD and as well as the AGV, which has a very high profile. So it has to be anchored well, so it should not wiggle, which causes the tube to come out. And at the same time, it should be covered well mainly to prevent uh, serious complications like extrusion or even uh, panophthalmitis. And we are used to doing quick surgeries, maybe about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, but we must understand that Im implant requires a little bit longer duration of time, so we have to little plan a little better. Maybe take up the patient under general anesthesia or even IV sedation and understand that it won't finish uh, very quickly. So if you have to give that amount of time to uh, come, uh, bring, it, bring, bring around a very good outcome. <clears throat> There are certain late limiting steps which can be addressed in the wet lab. I'm not going to talk about the, a lot of other steps. I'll just con confine myself to the, uh, uh, the wet lab practice, how we can improve the steps of the surgery. The first one is, of course, securing the plate, the tube ligation, tube prime, uh, trimming, and then tube insertion. So these four steps can be very comfortably practiced in the wet lab. So this is a, a video which shows uh, securing the plate in the uh, wet lab under microscope and you find that the patient, uh, the, the surgeon is very comfortable. He is taking his own time to uh, pass the suture through the sclera and then a very nice technique of reversing the suture so that the pointer head doesn't come through the eye of the uh, plate. So this is a very safe technique whereas if you see a, a person with a less experience doing that, you'll find that there's a lot of whether to push it this way or to place it that way, and then somebody has to guide the surgeon doing it. So it, it takes a little bit more time. So wet lab practice definitely helps you to refine your skills, modify the steps. Maybe in the same eye, you can practice four or five times, ten times, and then understand which step. Because once you are in the field, there are a lot of other uh, conditions which uh, are beyond your control. All of a sudden, there will be flooding and then you won't be able to see what you're doing, and then uh, assistant has to clean everything, and then you have to progress. So you can find that wet lab practice definitely helps you in many steps. The second step which I mentioned is tube ligation. This is again, if you practice in the wet lab, you'll find that you have a lot of time, you can plan where you want to place the suture, you have anchored the suture, and you can use a small 6-0 vicral suture, and two throws or three throws, and then pull it tight, nicely. And you can always uh, magnify and see how the, <coughs> the tube kinks at that point, just like a sausage. Between the sausage, the kink is there. And you know that you've applied the correct pressure, and the fluid doesn't come out. So this can be practiced umpteen number of times in the same sitting. Whereas if you were to compare that to something happening in the field, you'll find that there's a lot of uh, features uh, uh, which will, you know, uh, obscure your identification and, uh, and you're, of course, short of time. So you always have a, uh, somebody to help you out, you require and help somebody to guide you. 
and the loop will get you know uh, uh, knotted and then you have to undo it and then it, it takes more time and you don't have that sort of uh, time so wet lab practice definitely helps you a lot and then placement of the ligature is also very important you have to place it very close to the plate and tube trimming also can be meticulously and deliberately planned how to cut it where to cut it you can have the bevel facing to the to the roof or you can ceiling or you can have the bevel facing to the floor or you can have bevel facing to the right or left and then plan where you want to insert the how 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 much length you plan to keep and how to pull the tube and cut it not just cut it uh, flexibly how to pull it target it and then cut it similarly if you have uh, for example in this surgery the surgeon is operating he's trying to place the implant inferiorly and you have an angle at which it has to be cut so this is really technically uh, difficult unless you have this uh, sense of gripping it with the scissors and then nicking it you won't have that uh, feeling and then creating the tube track also is very important how you can plan to create the track how how much is the partial depth what is the correct depth how far behind the limbus you want to plan to do it you want to do it 4 mm 3 mm if you want to have a longer track or a shorter track that is sufficient and you can deliberately enter the tip of the needle insert it slowly and then see in fact you can even you know feel the uh, tip of the needle as you are inserting the tube inside the anterior chamber using a forceps whereas in the live surgery you may not have so much of a time you don't know how to place it you are trying to uh, adjust it because it's it has to come with practice and that can be done much better in a wet lab and since you have in fact this is uh, the tube is being placed infranasally so the surgeon is already sitting on the right side of the left eye patient and is working across the nose so that send all a uh, little uh, uh, the handling of the instruments will all will be much better if you already know how to hold the tube how to insert it how to grip it and what instrument is required sometimes a serrated forceps works much better than a uh, macpherson forceps so here you have only one shot whereas in the wet lab it's always helps a lot you can practice n number of times and then have your procedure very uh, meticulously planned <coughs> tube insertion of course this is one of the most important rate limiting steps sometimes it extends on and on for some cases if you don't get it right and then uh, then you have a lot of tips that you can cut the external edge or something like that so you know a lot of uh, tips have to begin mainly because practice is not there so if you have a, a wet lab practice where you can uh, insert the tube very comfortably and that's it done so this is tube is trimmed and then you'll find that the surgeon is beginning to insert it and uh, it sometimes goes in sometimes doesn't go in so such a, a, a eventuality can be avoided with good practice not only for implant surgery for any surgery for that matter simulation is nowadays becoming a very uh, important the next generation of doctors who you know who nowadays already have a smartphone and ipad and a lot of simulation on the ipad they are going to expect this so unless we train the next generation of doctors in simulation and then take them onto the field i think there'll be a big expectation so learning curve for them uh, for the uh, there are certain surgeon related factors main thing is that we have to understand that the aim of the surgery is to prevent further optic nerve head damage and we should always have give realistic expectation to the patient so patient thinks of an implant just like an intraocular lens so you place an implant he should be medicine free that doesn't equate in that level and then skill level and surgical experience are also very important and of course regular exposure to this surgery so supposing one has a option of going to the or about once a week or maybe once in 10 days maybe it will you have to mo uh, go to the or a little bit more frequently and of course interdisciplinary approach is very important especially when we start we request not even our retinal colleagues we request our pediatric ophthalmology colleagues to come and uh, help us dissect the muscles and uh, uh, show us the landmarks and all and duration of surgery has to be kept in mind and we always have to understand from the patient related factors the refractory it's a refractory glaucoma and there's a lot of distortion of the eyeball as such there already a surgery been done landmarks are not very clear always important to understand that keep things very simple 
and uh, always give an option. I always, when I want a plant, in, in, sorry, plan implant, I always think whether I can do something else for the patient first. Whether a needling of a previous trap will be helpful, or a trap with ologen, or trap with a mitomycin C with a longer duration of application. Sometimes I even do a SLT before I even uh, attempt a uh, implant. Of course, nowadays we always think of individualization of the uh, surgery of for the patient's benefit, individualize the treatment to the patient's benefit. So for that proper case selection is a very definitive must. That will uh, enhance your confidence. At the same time, it will not give a bad reputation to the implant also. Thank you and very special thanks to Dr. George for giving me the uh, video for the wet lab.